Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. Today we have a lot to talk about in the world of jailbreaking, specifically the iOS 10 jailbreak, and also Happy New Year's. Big thumbs up for 2017. I'm incredibly excited for it, not only from the perspective of a jailbreaker, but also from that of an Apple enthusiast, because we should receive a lot in both the hardware and software departments in 2017, and specifically the iPhone might finally get a full design refresh. We've had the same iPhone 6 style design for so long. Let me know if you're excited about that down below in the comment section. Also, of course, big thumbs up because we should get our first public usable jailbreak for iOS 10 very soon. 3C33 is finally over, Luca Tedesco is on his way home, and hopefully he should be able to complete that gamma jailbreak that we've all been eyeing since about Christmas now. Also, quick note, my Apple AirPods and my gift cards giveaway has finally concluded. The winners have been announced on Twitter if you happen to miss it, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you're excited about new giveaways that I do have planned in the future. They're coming up soon. Click that subscribe button below next to my channel name to ensure that you don't miss out when I announce them and when I also release videos concerning jailbreaking and updating you guys like I'm doing today. Now with that said, before we fully get into what we're going to talk about in this video, I do need to preface by saying that I highly recommend you guys watch the preceding parts in this series. This is essentially the fourth installment, and while the first isn't necessary, you definitely should check out the second and third. In fact, I will have down below in the description a link to a special playlist containing all parts. It is also on your screens now via the cards. You will definitely have to watch through that to actually understand and what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's get into it. As I said before, Luca Tedesco is on his way home from 3C33, and that also means that hopefully we should get our Gamma jailbreak shortly, because of course, as many of you do know, he did tease the prospect of a Gamma or a more stabilized jailbreak than what he's released thus far for iOS 10.1.1. Of course, as many of you know, Gamma comes after beta, and it's definitely not the final version, but it should be more stable. He has promised more stability, and hopefully it could include support for additional devices. We're unclear whether at that point the public should jailbreak because of course the beta jailbreak has been reserved for developers to actually finalize things and get everything functioning on iOS 10. But of course some individuals who do not fall under the category of developer have kind of jumped the gun a bit and they've put their device's ability to be able to jailbreak in the future at jeopardy because of course they could be forced into a restore as I've been talking about throughout this series. But Luke is on his way home now. In fact, his Twitter timeline is full of tweets concerning his travels and trying to get home. Once he does, again, we should actually receive a gamma jailbreak shortly because as I mentioned previously, he forgot to actually copy over some of the code that he was working on from his main desktop computer to his laptop. So he couldn't work on anything jailbreak related other than actually fixing some bugs on his already jailbroken iOS 10.1.1 device. That was pretty much it. So now that he's on his way home again, things should be finalized, or at least the Gamma version should be finalized very soon. I'm going to keep you guys fully updated, of course, as I have throughout this series. I want you guys to be able to jailbreak just as badly as I want to be able to jailbreak, and I also don't want you guys to risk your own ability to jailbreak. That's absolutely key, because while I could so easily release a tutorial telling you how to jailbreak iOS 10.1.1, believe me, I definitely thought about it. I don't want you guys to be forced into to a restore accidentally, and I don't wanna be the reason that you guys have to restore your devices. So I've opted to actually not release a tutorial until things are more stable. Now next up, we're going to talk about iOS 10.2. This is also pretty exciting. Luca tweeted out on Twitter, quote, suggestion, keep 10.1 slash 10.2 blobs real close on pre-764 bit. What the heck does that mean? Well, essentially he's referring to SHSH blobs. There has been kind of a tool to come out as of late that does technically allow for downgrades called Prometheus. There have been some issues with Apple's signing server though. I haven't released a tutorial on it yet and I don't know whether I will in the future, but essentially there is a utility that does technically allow for downgrades. If you have your SHSH blob saved, which can only be grabbed while a firmware is still being signed. 
Now the reason why he's talking about this is actually pretty exciting. So let's go ahead and switch on over to the next tweet. He says, quote, reason for that is that my KPP technique thing should in fact be usable to chain load a new kernel. Now his jailbreak does have the ability to bootstrap a new image from a living kernel, which essentially is a requirement for a modern downgrade following the Kloader method. Again, what does that mean? Because it sounds like I'm speaking gibberish. Well, essentially, technically, he could use his main KPP technique, which actually attacks KPP, which is fully different from anything that's ever been released publicly previously, at least according to Luca, to downgrade to a lower iOS version. Now, he himself is not going to release anything that's actually capable of downgrading, but it is technically possible. He's just not going to do the work required to actually do it. There would be so much that it would entail that again, it's just not worth it for him, especially since we do have this Prometheus thing that's kind of looming on the horizon, something that could potentially be usable. Now let's go ahead and switch on over here to the next tweet. This also relates to his iOS 10.1.x jailbreak potentially being usable for iOS 10.2 because he says, quote, a jailbreak for 10.2 is not planned but it is still vulnerable to the underlining technique used, so it's the second best firmware. This also kind of loops back to him talking about his KPP method, specifically related to, of course, iOS 10.2 and 10.1. This means that in essence, again, the underlying foundation of his jailbreak hasn't been patched in iOS 10.2, even though there are a number of security fixes inside of iOS 10.2. The main exploits, of course, have been patched. This is different. This isn't related to the chain of exploits that are triggered in a jailbreak, but this could definitely aid someone in jailbreak development if they wanted to target iOS 10.2. Hello, Pangu. I mean, come on, it would be great to get an iOS 10.2 jailbreak. I know a lot of you are with me there. Now, let's go ahead and switch on over to the next one here. He says, quote, 10.2 is vulnerable to my KPP thing, not blowing zero days for it. So as I mentioned before, 10.2 still vulnerable to KPP, but of course all of the exploits actually used in the chain to jailbreak are now patched. They were of course patched in fact before the jailbreak was even released because that is how it was actually built. If you guys happen to watch the first part of this series, you'll definitely know that, but he's saying that he's not going to burn any unknown vulnerabilities or at least any unknown public vulnerabilities to actually accomplish a jailbreak on iOS 10.2. He's essentially done what he's going to do for iOS 10.1.x, and now he's working on stabilizing it, but that doesn't mean that someone else won't do that. As I mentioned, Pangu definitely is still targeting iOS 10.2.x. It's unclear whether his technique works on iOS 10.2.1, though because he did not specify 10.2.1, it might not. Either way though, this is still very exciting stuff, and this means that we could hopefully get a jailbreak jailbreak for the latest public firmwares and not just iOS 10.1.x because while it is great to finally have a jailbreak for iOS 10, I for one would much rather prefer a jailbreak on iOS 10.2 so that way I could use my Apple AirPods because of course it is a requirement that your iOS device be on iOS 10.2 to actually use it, not just iOS 10. Also, in this final tweet, he says, quote, by that I imply that KPP alone is not enough. I am simply not supplying any other missing part. Again, this just goes back to what I said before, and this is the final piece in this story. He's not going to work on actually upgrading it to include support for iOS 10.2, and of course, there's not going to be a downgrade from this either, but this is definitely very exciting from a jailbreaker's perspective, and we're getting some insight into the world that we normally don't hear about because of of course, primary developers such as Pangu, of course, even Taiji and the jailbreak teams of old never give ETAs, they never give announcements or even share their thoughts related to jailbreak development. This time we do have some actual insight from Luca Tedesco. It's pretty exciting to actually see his process as he's working through this. And again, like I said, we should get our first stabilized version of an iOS 10.1.x jailbreak very soon. 10.2's future also looks bright. I'll keep you guys updated anytime anything happens. Again, click that subscribe button if you have yet to. Also, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Black Geek Tutorials. He helped a lot in the analysis found in today's video. Subscribe to his channel if you have yet to. It's linked below. One last time, happy New Year's, happy 2017, and let's hope we get more jailbreaks.
this time around. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the I Crack Your Eye Device community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.